All right, in this video, we want to look at the very special relationship for the right triangle that has two 45 degree angles. Because when we do, uh, we see some really fantastic things happen. So you can imagine that a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle is basically half of a square if you cut along the diagonal. So you can kind of imagine that this is being extended out here and it's forming a huge square where each exterior side length is going to be in. If you apply the Pythagorean theorem, you find out that the hypotenuse is going to be n times the square root of 2. So very similar to the stuff that we saw in the previous video when we're looking at our 30, 60, 90, 90 degree triangles, right? So 30 is going to be the smaller one. There's 60. This is n. The hypotenuse is 2n. And this would be n square roots of 3. So it's all about these ratios. So since you have a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, you have an isosceles triangle, which is why what you see here with N and N being the same, because those two sides are going to be congruent. Now, like we did before, suppose that N is equal to one. What does that give me? It gives me this triangle right here. So you have the two side lengths of one, you have the hypotenuse being the square root of two, and you see that when you use the Pythagorean theorem, it all works out. So like we did before, let's identify what those trigonometric function values are. So if I have sine of 45 degrees, now since this is isosceles, it doesn't matter which of these base angles you look at, whether it's the one that's 45 or the one that's 45, because they're the same, right? So sine is supposed to be opposite, over hypotenuse. But you know we want to make sure we rationalize. So this becomes the square root of 2 over 2. Now interestingly enough, isn't cosine supposed to be the sine of its complement? And the complement of 45 is 45. So this guy will also be the square root of 2 over 2. Hmm. What do you know? The tangent of 45 degrees is going to be the ratio of sine to cosine or opposite to adjacent, and that is just 1. 1 over 1. All right. I have no idea how many times that I write an S instead of a C when I'm trying to write cosecant. Whew. I've got problems. All right, so the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that's just the square root of 2. And you'll see the exact same thing for the secant. That's the square root of 2. And then for the cotangent, the cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of 1. And that's just 1. All right. So if we put all this together in a table, right, all these values that we have here, plus all the ones that we have from the previous video, here's what we're going to be looking at. All right. So... I guess I should prepare this just a little bit better. You know what? No, I'm just going to... It's going to be rough. I don't really care. All right. So we're going to have our angle measures here. I'm going to go in order. Let's go 30 degrees, 45, and 60. Now... For this table, I'm only going to do part of this because I'm going to let you guys work out the rest of it. So let's do sign here. And then we'll do cosine here. And then over here at the end, let's do tangent. Now you may be saying, why am I not also doing secant, cosecant, and cotangent? These guys are all going to be reciprocals of the values that we have here. And you can go back and you can fill out that chart in the notes yourself. But there are a few things I want to point out with what we have here. So for the sine, sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And it goes to the square root of 2 over 2. And then it goes to the square root of 3 over 2. Notice that as the angle measure gets bigger, sine gets bigger as well. So you think about how the angles are, are, are set up. 
So you have this, right? And the bigger this angle gets, the higher it gets. And as we mentioned in previous videos, the, the Y value is going to have a very strong correlation to the sign. So the higher Y it gets, the larger the sign value gets. And that's what we see right here. You might think, I don't know about those square roots. Well, if I put a square root symbol right here, right? The square root of one is still one. But the square root of two is gonna be a little bit larger than the square root of one. And the square root of three is gonna be a little bit larger than that. Now look at what happens with cosine though. Cosine of 30 degrees starts out as the square root of three over two. Then at 45, it's the square root of two over two. And then at 60 degrees, it's one half. So you see that the denominator is the same just as it was for the sine, but that numerator gets smaller and smaller because as we are taking this angle and we're opening it up and we're dropping that perpendicular, that perpendicular makes this X value get smaller and smaller and smaller because you have a steeper, um, you have a steeper angle. So there's not much of a base left for it anymore. So the larger this angle measure gets, the smaller the X value. What about tangent though? So if we copy those values from up above, for the tangent of 30 degrees, it's the square root of three over three. Then it's one for 45 degrees, and then it's the square root of three. So this tangent may be hard to believe, but the tangent value is getting larger. The square root of three is less than three, which makes this, I don't wanna call it a proper fraction, but it's going to have a value that's less than one. Then you get to one, and then you get to the, to the square root of three, which is approximately 1.732. So as the angle gets bigger, sine gets bigger, and tangent gets bigger. However, as the angle gets bigger, cosine, which is related to your x, gets smaller and smaller. So the information that we have here in this chart is going to be crucial for everything else that we do in this course. A lot of things for us to, to memorize, and there are going to be some neat little mnemonics that we see along the way to help us figure out what we're supposed to do. And one of those things that you're going to be, going to be seeing later is we think about this on a graph, and we talk about a, a unit circle, and you start to mark out where things are. So you would have 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and 60 degrees. And when we talk about a unit circle, this is going to be something that has a radius of one. And the measures that you see, these coordinates that you have, are going to have a direct relationship to the sine and cosine. So I don't want to say too much more than that, except be excited, okay, because I am.